Okay. So I'm um, on 5.1. I'll do a lot more 5.1. I'm not sure if I have time to go back and do 4.9. I know I didn't get a chance to do all of them yesterday, but you know, hopefully we'll have time later. Uh, let's see. Quiz tomorrow will be on antiderivatives. Okay, so I'll give you some functions. I'll write it in terms of an integral. You just integrate the function. Okay. So here are some functions, blah, blah, blah. Give me the most general antiderivative, which means it should be blah, 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 plus C, unless you can solve for C, right? So it'll be stuff like 4.9. <clears throat> By the way, you have a built-in way to double check your answer, right? How can you check any antiderivative? Take the derivative, right? So you integrate through the power rule, whatever, blah, 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 saying, hmm, I wonder if I did it right. Take the derivative. And if I take the derivative and you get the original back, you know you did it right. Is that right? Okay. And it does have to be a little bit tricky, especially with the trig ones. So especially for sine and cosine, right? So for sine and cosine, be careful now. Are you going to the derivative direction or the anti-derivative integral direction, right? So for instance, if I say sine of x, the derivative of sine x is cosine x, but not the anti-derivative, right? Anti-derivative of sine x is negative cosine x plus c, because the derivative of negative cosine x plus c is positive sine x, and so on. Okay, so quiz tomorrow on antiderivatives, stuff like 4.9. Okay, well, let's get back to where we were. <clears throat> I didn't do a whole lot of problems at all yesterday. In fact, I think I only did maybe one or two. Okay, so some of these problems later, uh, two, three, five, seven, how do I do those? Okay, so let me show you question number Fine. All right, so yesterday they give you the picture and you draw the rectangle. Now they don't give you the picture, they give you the function, which is actually better because with the picture, you're guesstimating, right? You're saying, okay, what's the height? Is the height, you know, like right there, is 1.8 or 1.9 or, you know, it's just kind of eyeballing it. But when you have a function, you can just plug directly into the function. Okay. So let's look at number five, please. Yellow. So estimate the area under the graph of f of x equals one plus x squared, x going from negative one to two using three rectangles and right endpoints. Okay. And then I'm going to switch over to using left endpoints okay. and then midpoints. All right. So I'm not going to do the six, I'll just do the three. All right, so here's the picture. All right, so f of x equals one plus x squared. We know what it looks like. It's a parabola opening up. Okay. In fact, you can just plug in nice numbers. So when you plug in negative one, what do you get? Two. <clears throat> plug in zero, you get one. Plug in one, you get two. Plug in two, you get five. So here's the graph. Okay, they say chop it into three pieces. From negative one to positive two is three. So that's very convenient. That means delta x is one. So the base of the of these rectangles are all one. So when you go base times height, base times height, base times height, all the bases are one. That's very convenient. All right. So the first part, they want you to use the right endpoints. Okay. So the right endpoints from negative one to zero. What's the right endpoint? Zero. So go straight up until you touch the graph, draw a rectangle. So you can see this rectangle is too small. I'm supposed to get this area right here, right? I got this, so I've lost all this. Then between zero and one, the right endpoint is one. So go straight up, touch the graph, and draw a rectangle. Now this one's too big. Okay. So if I always use the left endpoints or right endpoints, you don't necessarily always have an under or over estimate. The graph might change. Okay, so for the right endpoint, this rectangle is too small, but this rectangle is too big. And they want us to do the same thing for the third right endpoint. So the right endpoint between one and two is two. So go straight up until I touch the graph, draw a rectangle, and this one is clearly too big. Okay, so R3. R means I'm using the right endpoints, and I chopped up the, the integral into three sub-integrals. 
So from negative one to two, chop it into three, they told me. So I'm going from negative one to zero, zero to one, one to two. Okay. I want the function values at the right endpoints. The function values at zero, one, and two. Okay. So the function value of zero was one. The function value at one was two. The function value at two was five. Add them all up, multiply by one, the answer is eight. So R3 is eight. So my estimate for the area under the curve right now is eight. Okay, and I need the next page to get that. Okay, so I'm trying to reconstruct the same picture uh, as we have here. Now, use the left endpoints. So we're going from negative one to two, N is three, left endpoints. So from negative one, I think I should label these. Negative one, zero, one, two. <clears throat> so from negative one to zero, the left endpoint is negative one. Go straight up, draw myself a rectangle. That's too big. Between zero and one, the left endpoint is zero. Go straight up until you touch the graph, draw a rectangle. That's too small. Right? I'm supposed to cover everything here. I only have this, so I lost this piece here. And then from one to two, the left endpoint is one. Go straight up until you touch the graph, draw a rectangle. That's too small. I lost all of this region here, right? I'm supposed to include up, up, down, and back. I'm only including this, so I lost all this. So again, it's base times height, base times height, base times height. All the bases are the same. It's one. Factor out the one. Well, it's nice to multiply by one anyway. And now the function values at the left endpoints are two, one, and two, five. Okay. So L3 is five. And then they wanted to use the midpoints. So question 5C, do the midpoints. Here are the midpoints. So halfway, straight up, draw a rectangle. Now that rectangle looks pretty good, right? Because I lost that piece there, but I gained that. Likewise here, you're losing something, you're gaining something. Losing something, gaining something. Okay. So it's still delta x, which is one. And then the new heights, are the function values f of negative a half, f of one half, f of three halves. Those are the three midpoints, right? Negative one half, positive one half, and one and a half or three halves. So I plug each of these in to the function to get the heights. So negative a half squared is one fourth, add one, 1.25. Okay. Do the same thing for one half. F of one half. Plug in a half. Well, one half squared is still one fourth. Add one. One and one fourth. 1.25. <clears throat> F of three halves. Plug in three halves. Squared is nine fourths. Nine fourths plus Four fourths is 13 fourths, which is three and a quarter, 3.25. Add them all up, 5.75. Then it asks you to guess which was the best. Well, midpoint really looks like it's the best, right? Because in each case, it looks like you gain something, but you lose something, right? Okay. So let's look at that first area. I'm supposed to cover this, this, and this. I'm replacing it with this rectangle. So it's pretty good because I lost that area, but I gained that area. Okay, and that tends to happen for all the other ones also. Okay, that's how that one works. All right. Okay, then I was gonna show you number seven. Seven, evaluate the upper and lower sums Notice the language there, upper and lower sums. That means it's not necessarily always the left endpoint. 
it's not necessarily the right endpoint. You look at each sub interval and determine which is considered upper and lowest. It's going to change. Okay, so f of x is 2 plus sine x, uh, 0 to pi, n is 2, 4, and 8. Okay, I'm going to do it with n equals 4. Okay. And illustrate with a diagram. Okay. All right, so 2 plus sine x between 0 and pi, n equals 4. So if I'm going from 0 to pi, that distance is obviously pi, divided by 4, delta x is pi over 4. So each of these is pi over 4, pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4. Okay. We know what the sign looks like. The sign looks like this, but when you add 2, it pushes the whole graph up to 2 units, so now it looks like this. Okay. So this is sine x plus 2. Okay. Normally, it would go through the origin, but the plus 2 means it goes up there. Maximum, mid-level, minimum, mid-level. Okay, so here's what we got. So here are my intervals. I don't know what I do. I'll go like this. So from zero to pi over four, from pi over four to pi over two, pi over two to three, pi over two to three pi over four, and three pi over four to pi. Okay. Now this time it's a little different. It didn't say use the left endpoint or right endpoint. Look at number seven. It says upper and lower sum. So you have to pick which one is the upper and which one is the lower to get an upper or lower estimate, regardless of whether it's the left endpoint or right endpoint. So that might change in this problem. Okay, so here's what you do. <clears throat> yes, it's gonna be base times height, base times height, base times height, base times height. Well, all the bases are the same, pi over four, so you might as well factor out the pi over four. Now, here's the game we're playing. Look only between 0 and pi over 4. So block out everything else. Just look at that. So the graph is like so. Okay. So which function value should I pick for a lower estimate? 2. How about the upper estimate? 3. Okay. So between 0 and pi over 4, for the upper sum... I'm putting three and the lower sum is two. Okay. One more time, for that first interval from zero to pi over four, remember we're doing base times height, base times height, base times height, base times height. All the bases are the same, pi over four. Okay. Only look between zero and pi over two. That means the only part of the curve is there, which would be the upper estimate, the rightmost point, pi over four, that height is three. What's the lowest value? Two. So there we go. Now go to the next subinterval from pi over four to pi over two. The function is now decreasing, right? It's going down. So which would be the upper estimate? The function value at pi over four, which is again three. Except this time it's on the left endpoint. Only look between pi over 4 and pi over 2. Look at the curve, which would be the lowest point at pi over 2. The function value is 2. So again, 3 and 2. Upper sum 3, lower sum 2. Okay. Move to the third subinterval from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. So the only part of the graph I'm looking at is this part, the decreasing. So which would be the upper estimate? function value at pi over 2, which is 2. And what's considered the lower estimate? The function value at 3 pi over 4, which is 1. So there it is. Upper limit, 2. Lower limit is 1. And finally, for the last subinterval, from 3 pi over 4 to pi, the graph goes up. It's increasing. So if I want a lower estimate, which do I pick? The left end point, 3 pi over 4, that function value is 1, lower sum. And what do I pick for the upper estimate? The very end, the function value at pi, which is 2. So in this particular problem, it wasn't a matter of, oh, you pick the left end point, you pick the right end point. No, you just pick whichever is the higher or lower. OK, 
Okay, so this comes out to be 10 pi over 4, 5 pi over 2. That's my upper sum. And my lower sum, this comes out to be 6 pi over 4 or 3 pi over 2. All right, so the only thing I can say right now is the true area under the curve is something between 3 pi over 2 and 5 pi over 2. And that's all I can say. Okay. So that's the way that one works. All right, so that is that. Okay, the next one I want to show you is another picture. All right, so I, I did two. I did a couple of three, five, seven, okay, 13, 15, 17. What's going on there? Let me do 13. And 15 is similar. 13. The speed of a runner increased steadily during the first three seconds of a race. Her speed at half second intervals is given in the table. Find lower and upper estimates for the distance that she traveled during these three seconds. Okay, time is in seconds, velocity is feet per second. Okay, so before I do anything here, let me just talk about the logic here. Now, I could plot these. So here's going to be something that's extremely crude. So, put this up, okay? So, time is in seconds, and velocity is feet per second, right? And what's the highest velocity? 20. So 5, 10, 15, 20. Okay. I'm going to plot this real crudely. So 0, 0. I should leave it at 1, 2, 3. Okay. I said, what am I doing? And by the way, you don't have to do this to work the problem out, but I'm doing it just for teaching purposes. I'm going to plot these points. So the origin, right, 0.56.2. So she's speeding up, obviously. You know, the race starts. So, you know, the starter gun bang goes up. So obviously at the beginning, your speed is zero. And then it looks like you're accelerating to 6.2 feet per second, 10.8 feet per second, and eventually to 20.2. Okay. So I'm going to try to plot these. So 6.2, 10.8, a little bit more than 10. 14.9 is a little bit under 15. 18.1, 19, so, okay, so real crudely, this is her speed, okay? I'm going to go like this, and like this, and like this, and like this, and like this. Okay, here's what's actually happening. Now, I don't feel like doing it for all of them. Let me just do one of them. Underestimate, overestimate, right? How do you find the area of a rectangle? Base times height. Okay. If you think about the units, the units are seconds times feet per second, right? If you have seconds and multiply it by feet per second, seconds cancel out. You have feet, which means by making use of this strategy, we can get an estimate for the total distance traveled, which is what's going on here. Base times height, right? which is the whole idea behind the rectangle. Base is in seconds. Units velocity is feet per second. So if I go base times height, seconds times feet per second is feet. So we can use that as an estimate for how far she's run. Okay, we can come up with an overestimate and an underestimate. To find lower and upper estimates. Well, we've played that game before. For a function like this, let's just take the region between 1.5 and 2. Okay, so only 
focus your attention only on the red right here. Where would I get the lower estimate? That's endpoint, 1.5. Where would I get the upper estimate? Two function values there. That's going to be true across the board. So when I go base times height, base times height, all the bases are the same, 0 0.5, and then I just multiply it by whatever I need to. <clears throat> so lower estimate, 0 0.5, and then for each pair, I take the smaller number. So between 0 and 6.2, I'll pick 0. Between 0 0.5 and 1.0, I'll pick 6.2. All the way until 2.5 to 3.0, I'll pick 19.4. I'm always going to pick the left endpoint for the low estimate. Right? So just add up all these guys here. So I can't show you both at the same time, sorry. So this is going to be 6.2 plus 10.8 plus 14.9, plus 18.1, plus 19.4. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot a zero. I forgot the zero. So the heights are zero, 6.2, 10.8, 14.9, 18.1, 19 Those are the six left endpoints. That will be our estimate for the total distance she traveled, which is going to be in feet. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and plug that in. So 0.5 times 6.2 plus 10.8 plus 14.9 plus 18.1 plus 19.4, close parentheses, 34.7. Typed it all in, 34.7. That's my lower estimate. Upper estimate. I take all the right endpoints. Because you'll be going like that, and like that, and like that, and so on. Right? They're all going to be too big. So on each sub interval, I take the right endpoints. So from 0 to 0 0.5, which one do I pick? 6.2. From 0 0.5 to 1, which of these two do I pick? The larger number, 10.8, etc. All the way down to 2.5 to 3.0, which number do I pick? 20.2. Okay. I'm picking all the right endpoints. All of the in-between ones are going to match. So it's 0 0.5, 6.2 plus 10.8, plus 14.9, plus 18.1, plus 19.4. And now I have to include that last number, which is 20.2. And that comes out to be 44.8 feet, I believe. Okay, so what does that mean? Based on this table, where she starts at rest, increases her speed up to 20.2 feet per second for three seconds, <clears throat> the lower estimate, underestimate for the distance traveled, 34.7 feet, upper estimate, 44.8 feet. So the true value that she ran is probably something in between. If you just have to give an estimate, period, maybe a nice thing to do is take the average, add them up and divide by two. Will it be exact? Probably not, but it'd be pretty good average. Okay. All right, and I hope that was enough time. Again, you can always check the video um, on what I'm doing. But for 15, it's very similar. I wasn't going to do it, but oil leak from a tank at a rate of blah, 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 the decrease as time passed, find upper and lower estimate. Exactly the same thing, only this time it's decreasing, right? 
and think about the units, hours times liters per hour. If you multiply hours times liters per hour, hours cancel out, you have liters. So that'll be an estimate for the total amount of liters volume that leaked out of the tanker, let's say. And as time goes by, this time it's decreasing. Okay, so the one I just did, you have an increasing function, right? She's running faster and faster. She's accelerating for the first few seconds. <clears throat> and here, the rate of leakage is decreasing, which kind of makes sense. You know, the most amount of spillage would be right at the beginning, and then as there's less and less volume inside the tank, and as time goes by, there's less and less. Okay. So if you want an upper estimate, you would pick all the left endpoints. And if you want a lower estimate, you pick all the right endpoints. All right, and then uh, I was going to show you 17, the last one. And maybe I'm almost done with that section. So where are we? Question 17. This is a little bit awkward because I have, to, I have to show you the picture. So I have to bob back and forth between showing you the picture and writing stuff down. The velocity graph of a braking car is shown. <clears throat> Use it to estimate the distance traveled by the car while the brakes are applied. Okay. So you step on the brakes, your speed eventually goes down to zero, right? Okay, and let's think about when we do our rectangles, we're doing seconds times feet per second. So if you use seconds times feet per second, seconds cancel out, you have feet. <clears throat> okay, so we're going from zero to six. Now, well, how about let's chop it up into six pieces, All right? So for 17, how about n equals six? They didn't tell us to do that, but that just seems reasonable for us, that n be six. Okay. Now, they just want estimate period. So if it just says estimate, from what we've seen so far, which is best, left endpoint, right endpoint, or midpoint? Midpoints, right? So I'll do the midpoints, which would be 0 0.5, 1.5, 2.5, 3.5, 4.5, and 5.5. Okay? So if I can crudely draw my interval without the graph, 0, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. The best estimate would be to take the heights at the midpoints here. Here, 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 and here. So that would be 0 0.5, 1.5, 2.5, 3.5, 4.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5, 5.5. So the picture would be like this. Okay, so if I'm going between 0 and 1, so focus only between 0 and 1. See that red graph right there? I would go halfway, go straight up, draw a rectangle, and that would be pretty good, right? If I pick only the left end point, draw a rectangle, too big. If I went the right end point, draw a rectangle, too small. The midpoints, pretty good. Is it exactly perfect? I doubt it, but it's a good guesstimate. Okay. So my delta x was 0 0.1. So I'm going to say M6. Okay, what's M mean? Midpoint. Six means I chop it up into six pieces. Notice they didn't tell me what to do. You figure that out on your own. So I said, okay, we're going from zero to six. A natural way to break it down is in six pieces, right? It wouldn't make sense for me to break it up into seven pieces. Then you'd have to go six divided by seven. Who wants to do that, right? Okay, so delta X is one. And now I want the function value at all the midpoints. So I'm going to write f of 0 0.5 plus f of 1.5 plus f of 2.5. See what I'm doing? I'm getting all the function values at the midpoints. Plus f of 3.5 plus f of 4.5 plus f of 5.5. I can't show you all of this at the same time, but now I can. Okay. <clears throat> 
So base times height, base times height, all six of them. What are the bases? They're all one. What's the height? Well, the function values at 0 0.5, 1.5, 2.5, 3.5, 4.5, and 5.5. And now I try to read them off. So here we go. 0 0.5 goes straight up. Uh, that's 40, that's 60, more than 50. I was going to say maybe 53. Just eyeballing it. Then 1.5, here's 1.5, 40. Looks like it's 40, right? 1.5, I'm gonna make it 40. Then F of 2.5, so 2.5 is here. Here's here. Uh, looks like it's halfway between 20 and 40. I'm gonna go with 30. And then the function value at 3.5. So 3.5 goes straight up, uh, not quite 20, right? I'll say 19. Okay, F of 4.5. So 4.5 goes straight up. Looks about halfway to me, right? So I'm gonna call it 10. And then 5.5, not very high at all, right? So maybe there, so where's there? Uh, I'll say five. Two goes blank. And my units are gonna be feet because it's feet per second times seconds. So many answers, so many feet. Three plus forty plus thirty. Hundred fifty-seven. Hundred fifty-seven feet. All right, I was going to be done, but. Uh, I was asked by somebody to do number three, so since I already did that, I might as well show you three, and then I'm pretty much done with this section. Okay? So what time is it? I'm not sure about time to go back and do any 4.9. Uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll see if my internet falls too. So uh, I'm pretty much done, but let me go back and do number three, and then I'll, I'm done with the section 5.1. So tomorrow I'll start 5.2, but you know I need to give you time to do the quiz also. Again, if we follow the schedule of two days per section, we'll be in very good shape um, in terms of finishing. So for now, let's tentatively still aim for Thursday, December the 10th for the last exam. If I move it, I'll let you know. Okay, question three. Okay, the graph is one over X from X equals one to X equals two. Use four rectangles, right endpoints, left endpoints. Is it an underestimate or an overestimate? Okay. Let's take a look. Okay, one over x between one and two, n equals four. Okay, so I plug in one, you get one, one, one. Plug in two, you get a half. And by the way, you should know that one over x looks like this, right? In fact, if I keep the graph going, so to speak, it keeps going like that, keeps going like that, right? One over x. Okay, so they told me to chop it up into four pieces. So delta x is one fourth or 0 0.25. Delta x is one fourth or 0 0.25. How did you get that? Well, how long was the whole interval? One from one to two. So we chopped it up into four pieces. So each one of these is one fourth. So 1.25, 1.5, 1.75, and two. All right, so they told me to use the right endpoint. That means between one and 1.25, I pick 1.25. Go straight up until you touch the graph, draw a rectangle, too small. 
between 1.25 and 1.5, I pick 1.5. Go straight up, draw rectangle, too small. So all of these are going to be too small if I use the right endpoint. So it'll be an underestimate. Right, so base times height, base times height, base times height, base times height. All the bases are the same, 0 0.25. So factor out the 0 0.25, and then now we need the heights. To find the heights, you plug into the function. So the right endpoints will be 1 over 1.25. The function is 1 over x, right? So I want the function value at the right endpoint. 1 over 1.25, 1 over 1.5, 1 over 1.75, and 1 over 2. Okay, punch it in the calculator. It's about 0.6345. And that is definitely an underestimate because all of these rectangles are too small. And then it says do the same thing with the left endpoints. Okay. So between 1 and 1.25, the left endpoint is 1. Go straight up, draw a rectangle. That's too big. They're all going to be too big. Between 1.25 and 1.5, left endpoint is 1.25. Go straight up, draw a rectangle. That's too big. And likewise, they're all too big. So what's our approximation for the area under the curve? So I find the sum of the areas of these four rectangles, they're all still the same base, 0 0.25. And now the heights are the function values at the left end points. So 1 over 1, 1 over 1.25, 1 over 1.5, 1 over 1.75. Those are the four left end points, right? Between 1 and 1.25, the left end point is 1. Between 1.25 and 1.5, the left endpoint is 1.25, and so on. Between 1.5 and 1.75, left endpoint is 1.5. That's what gets plugged into the function. Between 1.75 and 2, the left endpoint is 1.75. So 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1.25, 1 over 1.5, 1 over 1.75. Multiply the sum by 0 0.25, 0 0.7595, and that's my overestimate. Okay, so I know the true value is somewhere between the two, 0.6345 and 0.7595, and there we go. And if you just had to guess, well, you could always do the midpoints, and we, we tend to think that the midpoints are most accurate. That's not 100% true. You could make a function where the midpoint doesn't serve as a good approximation at all, but most of the time it does. But yeah, if you just say, give me an estimate, yeah, I would average these, add them up and divide by two, so maybe 0. 0.69 something. Okay. All right, folks, so I'm actually officially done now with uh, 5.1. So tomorrow I'll start 5.2. Uh, let me check the chat to see if anybody has anything. I might have to stop the share in order to get that. Yeah, so let me stop the share. Okay. Nothing in the chat box. Okay, uh, seven minutes left. Anybody want to ask a question? Otherwise, we're going to call it a day, and I'll just pick up tomorrow. This was right about the time yesterday when my internet went down, too, so maybe that's that. Okay, I don't hear anything, so we'll call it a day. All right, so tomorrow I'll start 5-2 for a while, and then I'll give you the quiz on the antiderivatives. Okay. All right, everybody, have a good afternoon. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye, everyone.